Hi guys, welcome to our take on Transistor. Yes, this is our post-game look at the video game that we just played, in this case, Transistor. Mm -hmm. Now, most of you who didn't watch our first our take on, well, all of you, probably are wondering what the actual fuck is this, and that basically just means we're going to talk subjectively about a video game for X minutes. X amount put, put, of time. Put up the length of the video on the screen right now. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we kind of structured this in a certain way so that we at least keep our conversation moving in, in the direction of the video game. Yeah. So, we start off by talking about the story, then we move on to the gameplay, and finally, design. Yeah. This will all be, of course, very subjective and including the review score. It is <laughs> our take on, after all. Yeah. So, let's start with the story. So, let's give a brief overview to our audience of the Transistor story. You are a singer. Who... Um, is targeted for assassination by some dude. Some people with a sword called a transistor. And, you know, some guy, you know, look, look goes all look out, Mr. President jumps in front yep. of the sword. He's dead. He's the sword. Go get the guys. It's except, absorbed into the sword. Except there's also some machine guys who are running a muck. Known game. as the process. Known as the process. The game makes, the game story is stupid. Let's just, let's just start. <laughs> Should out. just leave it at that? The game story is pretty stupid. Yeah, like, okay. Describe, like, a good game story can be described, like, simply and everybody knows what the fuck is actually going on. What are you doing, Mario? You're a fucking plumber, you jump, and you save princess from a giant fire-breathing turtle. Yeah, that's true. What are you doing, Transistor? Oh, I don't know, you've got a sword that can stop time, and you've got to kill these weird white robot things. In order to kill some dudes that tried to kill you. And then... Uh, uh, yeah. Like... The you game, go into the sword at the end, I guess. The game the game makes no sense. Why does Red care? Why did they want her voice? By the way, they Why were they trying to kill her? Oh, I guess trying to get her voice, I guess. By the way, they took her voice. What the fuck does her voice have to do with anything? <laughs> the story makes absolutely no sense. But... It still is pretty cool. But, yeah, there's always, <laughs> there's always a but. This game has some pretty good theming. Yeah, yeah, it does. So... The whole theming around coding and circuitry yeah. and... Yes, the game's got a, a very, very computery, technological kind yeah. of based yeah. backdrop, I mean. And it very much, like, there's very few human characters in the story. Like, like you could pretty much name them all on one hand. Yeah, pretty much. You've got, you've got Red. The dude in the sword's dead. But yeah, he died, but he was human. You've got, you've got the, the four guys of the camera. The bad guys, yeah. Who are like, again... It's a bit like weird. the like, what's her name? The first Sybil. boss. Sybil's not really human anymore. No, she's like, she's like, she look. Her silhouette looks kind of human when yeah. you fight her. Picture of the Sybil boss fight. Let's go right there. Anyways, her silhouette is kind of human. Yeah. But then when you beat her, she turns into this weird worm thing, which I guess is supposed to be like a a dehumanizing. Thing, Maybe like, something towards uh, like a virus or something. Yeah, like, a, like I don't know, like a metaphor for the yeah. dehumanization of technology. Mm, that's true. This game, this game actually makes a lot of anti-technology messages for a game completely centered around around technology. technology yeah, it's got a lot of symbolism, like, but yeah, it's, it's symbolism in video games. What are you gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> just, just symbolism in general. Yeah, true. What are you gonna do? This, so, this isn't like English class. We're not going to talk about symbolism and representations. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, go go watch IGN or something where they actually know how to talk and dictionaries. <laughs> we, I mean, neither of us are particularly intelligent. So what are you going to do? Yeah, sure, not really. Exactly, <laughs> Mister Mister Ninety Eight. Wait, what is it, like three Some point, three random point nine three point average or whatever? I don't know what that means. I don't know. Four, I can't even remember. 4.0 is A's, like all A's. Oh, okay, yeah, pretty much. Close so, enough. Yeah. Close enough. <laughs> anyway, anyways, that's a little bit off track. So, let's just get into the whole game feel of this all. And yes, that is our subjective term, mine. There is no factual basis for any of that. <laughs> you know, some, some sort of game design book somewhere, maybe. We came up with it before we thought it was a thing, or new, or whatever. Whether we still, whether it's a thing or not. Yeah. <laughs> whatever. Anyways, is the story good? I think that the story is not the best story in a video game, definitely not, but I do like the like theme of technology and stuff around it, and they kept the theme, but the, yeah, so not the, necessarily the best story ever. The, the story is bad, 
there's there's something that I watched in a YouTube video once called conveyance, mm-hmm. and a video game should never really break conveyance. No. If there's ever a point in a video game where you're ever, where you're ever just sitting there, fucking twiddling your thumbs, being like, "What do I do? Why the fuck am I doing this?" Then that's then that is bad conveyance. You failed in conveying your video game. Well, I don't think there's ever that point in Transistor. No, like well, you well, are always walking you, towards no, no. the goal. If you sit, if you sit and think about the story, like, ah, true. Why? Yeah, why? True. Why are you doing this? That's true. Why do you give a shit that the camera tried to kill you? Why don't you just go off and live in that weird island something that sometimes appears in the, the game. back door? Yeah. For all of those who actually remember what the things are. Yeah. So, like, why? Why? Why are the camarada so intent on making the process? By the way, that's what they did. They yeah. brought that shit out. Why do they care? Why is the process spreading so rapidly? Where are all the people? Are, are they the machine? That's true. Where did all the people go all of a sudden? Yeah, like... <laughs> like, there's people watching her concert and then suddenly they're all gone. There's, there's too many whys in a game where you're looking for answers. <laughs> and you only ever get... You don't even get answers yeah. by the end of the game. You're left exactly with as little information when you started and when you finished. Yeah. The only difference is, is now all of the members of the camera rider are dead. So <laughs> congratulations for vengeance. Ah, oh, well. Okay, let's move on to some gameplay. Let's move on to gameplay. Okay, so Transistor is an RPG. Indeed. With this time stop element. So there's a very clear separation between exploration and battle. They actually section off yeah there's areas. A, there's a clear area you know when you're going to be fought because it opens out and then there's, there's, there's usually there's some, some cover there's a tonal shift the music the music yeah. changes everything it's different everything is outlined you hear all these weird sound effects and when you're exploring it's just nice and chill it's a good time and the short sword is usually talking to you when you're exploring so he, he just always talks <laughs> well he just wanted to get the most out of that voice yeah that's true <laughs> <laughs> so like the, the exploration is just basically a walking simulator. There's not much else to say about no, that. No, there's some things you can interact with, but they're really not very interesting. You're just, yeah, you're just, for the most part, you're just walking from point A to point B, from battle to battle. It's The game is fairly linear. There's not a tremendous amount of exploration. in. So the exploration part is mostly just a, a transport module, if you will. Yeah. For the, yeah. For the actual game part of the game. <laughs> now then. On to the battles. So, as I alluded to earlier, there's this time stop mechanic in the battles where you can stop time. You stop and time and then you can plan your moves. Yeah, you can use, there's this planning meter, you can plan out all your moves and they happen almost instantaneously. And like this matrix bullet time. Yeah. So it's the inverse of a turn-based. It's a real-time st- uh, strategy thing that you can stop time and take your time to do your turn. Yeah, there's heaps, there's, there's heaps of time you should never really struggle with the difficulty of the combat. Yeah. You may you may die a couple of times, but the penalty for dying is you lose a move and we only ever lost jaunt, so... Yeah, we, we always we always seem to lose jaunt which is just the dodge which, mechanic, yeah, which, which is, really which, doesn't matter. Yeah, which is just a mobility move, so... Uh, there is there is real-time aspects to the combat, yeah, but... Yeah, somewhat. But all of the abilities have cooldowns I believe in real time yeah they do and they're also kind of they're also kind of janky to land so there's almost no point in ever doing real time combat I don't think the developers put much thought into it or much time into it no because that wasn't their focus yeah they like they they didn't care it's unrefined use use the mechanic that we put in place which is refined which which suffer the consequences yeah or suffer the consequences when you're when you're not planning, when you can't plan, when your meter is drained... It's kiting. Yeah, you're vulnerable. It's just kite simulator. You're vulnerable, you can't attack, because your meter is somehow also your ability to attack in real time. It's so, kind of the sword's charge, as it were. Yeah, I suppose, <laughs> in a way. So, the game the game definitely wants this kind... Definitely wanted to keep this kind of turn-based thing. You get your moment of playing to make a turn, and then the enemy gets their chance to attack, as it were. Yeah. And, you know, whether or not you can dodge that, very... That, a couple of RPGs have done the whole dodging attacks mechanic mm. before. Mario and Luigi series is one. Just Paper Mario in general. They're good games. Go buy them. We're not endorsed by Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> Corporate he just loves them. Not Nintendo. Yeah. 
No, I, have I love no, Nintendo. I have no great affinity towards Nintendo. No, they're they're a company. They exist to make money. Yeah, they they all do. But back onto the point. The gameplay in Transistor is solid. It's fun and it's pretty easy not to fuck up. It's pretty easy yeah. to get it right because there's heaps of room to make mistakes. You get a ton of health. Yeah. So and when you die, you get put right back into the battle. And if you have your your turn, which is the um, pause time mechanic, just by the way. If you have that full and you get an emergency one before you die as well. So, to yep. get, so it's very hard to actually fail in Transistor. Yeah, I, as being one, the one that actually played the game and playing it for the first time, I thought it was very good. I looked forward to the battles and liked the whole stopping time thing and planning your moves and then watching Red flick around the screen as she destroys all everything <laughs> in sight. Yes, th- those are some clean animations. Hmm. I definitely... I liked I liked the battle system. I feel like it's it's kind of a means to an end. It's kind of bridging the gap between turn based and yeah, real time yeah, action. Yeah, it is definitely. I def- I feel like they might have been able to do more if they had like if they had like special moves that you could only do in real time and try and put some emphasis. Yeah, on so it was kind of hybrid more than just like yeah. always wait until you're like, ready. Like if to you can like if you can stop. do stuff in real time, but then they have like these special like. Yeah. Like super moves if you want to yeah. call them that that you can only do in pause time and it like takes like all of your pause time but like you fuck all of the shit up or something. Yeah. I, I mean if they want if they want to make a sequel to Transistor maybe they'll look into some ways to expand the gameplay but they're not doing that they're making pyre. Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> so, overall, gameplay it was good. It was fun. Yeah, I enjoyed it. It was it's not the most complex scenario but with the ability to com- to have these moves, you can select four moves and have pretty much any one. Yeah, there's a lot of possibilities, and we didn't explore a lot of them, but like there is a lot. A lot of them, but like there's a lot of shit you can do. You've got yeah, you've got your four. But I find moves, like a- we kind of displayed it in the boss fight. Once you find the one that works, it just yeah crushes everything. Like if I was using anything other than that, I don't think I would have killed him as fast as I killed him. Oh, absolutely not. You probably would have died a couple of times. Yeah, but, like. There's four moves, there's a fuck ton of passives that you can augment moves or yourself with. It's 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 good, it, le- it leaves a lot of room for experimentation yeah. and allowing the player to find the kind of play style that suits them. Yeah. So, it's it's definitely... It's, it's good. <laughs> a bridged version, it's good. It gives you a lot of room to manoeuvre around and it's very difficult to fail, so you have heaps of time to actually experiment with what you want to do. Yeah, yeah. The game rewards. The game is more rewarding than it is punishing. It's more of an experience of I've done the thing, not I've overcome something. Yeah, that's true. So, but you know, it's always fun to have a game like that every once in a while. So, hey, no biggie. It was it was a fun game, fun game to play. Moving on to design, the the aesthetical elements of the game, the music design, the. The graphics, them graphics, I, the controls, all of it, yeah. all of the rest. I adore everything about the design, <laughs> design of this game. <laughs> I believe the very first thing I said when I started playing this game is, holy fuck, I love this game. <laughs> like, just, like, everything down from the fact that when you drag the sword along the floor, it's, like, leaving, like, a pattern of, like, digital thing to, like, the way the moves look and... Yeah, just the moves. The moves are very the soundtrack well is also very awesome. <laughs> the moves, the moves are very well animated. There's no, there's no move that's like, like way too out there. In yeah, how it looks most of them. Most of them start off relatively similarly with like a kind of, like a basis of how it should start, and then it just kind of. It's a sword, so yeah. It, well, usually yeah, you and, swing it, and each move is easily distinguishable from one another. I feel. Like yeah, yeah, got, yeah. I think so. You've got um. I don't remember any of the names of the moves. You've got one that moves in a straight line. You've got one that's just a bunch of like balls that fly out yeah. and hit things. You've got your you've got your jaunt. That's the one I do remember the name. Yeah. Which is just a quick dash. That's easy. Crash is like really slow hitting, but it also stuns. Yeah. Cull is like this massive upswing. So they're all they're all distinguishable in their in their effects and their animations. So you can instantly. You can instantly tell what you're doing as you're doing it. Yeah. The game also has this um this neon aesthetic to it, kind of. Kind yeah, of. yeah, I'd agree. I'd kind agree. Of, yeah, definitely. Kind of, in in so its background, there's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of yellow in the game. Yeah, there is. There's a lot of yellow and there's a lot of blue. Yeah. 
And that's yeah. sort of distinguishing this, the fact that like yeah. the like sort of techy yeah. sort of yeah. So the the atmosphere. environment the environment is yellow and blue mostly. The enemies are white and red. It's mm. a nice it's a nice contrast. I yeah. feel they stand out nicely against each other, so that it it definitely seems like something you know is actually different in the game. You can you can tell that. Yeah, you can tell that they're enemies. It's very mm. it's kind of obvious. The only thing that you can't really tell that they're enemies is those camera things. Oh yeah, because they, they kind of like sort of looked like they were there, but that's they, kind of the point, I think. Yeah, they're just because they are sort of meant to be paparazzi-ish things. Yeah, they're just that kind of repurposed. Yeah, kind of cameras. Yeah, and all of that. Of course. Now then, let's get into the soundtrack. I'm just gonna here's look. Both of us have pretty much every vocal song from the soundtrack on our playlist for list for playing video games. Uh, that's that- just. Have, yeah. have have for a while. Look, yeah. here's here's a link to the soundtrack just right now <laughs> up on the screen. Just it's it's free on Spotify. It's you can buy it on Steam. You can buy it on iTunes. You can listen to it on YouTube. Yeah, just go and actually have a listen to the soundtrack by itself. And the songs themselves are probably worthy of some sort of dissection by people who actually know about symbolism and lyrics and all yeah. that shit. There's there's no reason that we should probably even speak about the songs other than they're really good. They they build the atmosphere well and they yeah they're good to listen to as songs by themselves and they're also very good in the game for background and they're very relevant to the game when you hear them. The other the other thing that the songs do, which is fucking fucking genius, just just by the way, just put that out. <laughs> Hang there. on, do you want to say that again? No, fuck off. <laughs> You just ruined it. <laughs> uh, you fucking... Sorry, you're playing with this fucking sound. <laughs> you could have done that so much better. I'll put, a, I'll put an after effect in there. Okay, okay, okay. Fucking genius! <laughs> Anyways, is... When you're in, like... When you're in a fight with a vocal track, and there's only a couple of them, the civil fight is one. Yeah. When you actually use your, your turn, like, the songs change. Like, they go from being, like, this organic... Oh yeah, they do. Yeah, that's right. They do. This, like, this like super synthetic, like roboty voice. Yeah, they do. Singing the song, and it just like again symbolism. It creates this massive disconnect between the technology and the reality of it all, and it builds atmosphere. It does it? Yeah. Cre- it kind of creates this, you know, this like this like sense of how far the world is actually like like shit is going down. You know? Yeah, yeah, it does. They're, especially they're, yeah. You there pass are, into another world when you use the sword, and there, yeah, there are things. There are things going on <laughs> in this world, <laughs> and look, design is design is something we're shit at. So, <laughs> grain of salt with this. Yeah, but, probably. But I think we can both say safely say that the aesthetics of Transistor are the best part of the game. Yeah, the, they the are. game is the game definitely. Is, the game is instantly recognizable at a glance. It has a it has a wonderfully composed soundtrack that fits it all. All of the animations are smooth. There's very little... Well, there was actually some frame drops on the PS4. Yeah, but that's version. probably just mainly just PS4 things. Yeah, I don't know. I've played the game on PC and there were no frame drops there, so technically mm. the game was fine. It runs well. It looks great. Just yes to the design. They, yeah. wh- Whoever the artists were, fucking give them a raise and a gobby because they deserved it. Are you allowed to say that? I, t- I think I think the biggest <laughs> thing is that nobody will know what it means. So you reckon? You, Unless they're Australian, maybe. Unless they're Australian. So here's a maybe we we'll just leave it like that. <laughs> yeah, if you want, if you want to just go on to um, shit, should I actually link them to a porn site? Probably not. <laughs> no, <okay. laughs> you will get in trouble for that. <laughs> just, just like if you want to, if you want to find what a gobby is, here's the internet. Yeah, I'm not endorsing anything. <laughs> you do you, man. <laughs> okay, so now we get into the final verdict. This game is fun. Yeah, it's fun. I very much enjoyed playing it. It looks good and it's yeah. fun. It, it's a game that looks good, it plays good. There's there's very little room to fuck up, so it's a game that makes you feel strong. Yeah. So, the story is shit. Yeah, although, sadly. Although people always like to say that they're never really in the games for the story. They're in the game to... To kill things, mm. you know. It, that's, just, that's just any video game. Call of Duty. They don't, they don't. Well, it does depend on. Sometimes it does depend. Sometimes it does, but like for the most part, people just want to. People just want to hit things with swords or guns or yeah or whatever. So the story is never really the big detractor. But mm. 
We come into the game feel. In the game feel. And yes, the game feel is something that a game can have. It's that like it's like that subjective next step. Mm. A, a game that like pushes memorability and like it's special. It stays in your mind and it's special and all of that sappy shit. Mm. Companies are corporate douchebags. They need to say something cynical to balance it out. Yep. Does Transistor have the game feel? I think it does. I think the fact that like. I think the fact that, like, as soon as I, like, started playing the game, I, like, very much loved the visuals and stuff. That made it for me, like, that oh, yeah, something, made something. it. The fact that I now, like, since playing it, I have not it's, like, part of my, it's on my back phone background, isn't it? Like. <laughs> Over your girlfriend. Your girlfriend isn't your phone background. Red is your phone no, background. Yeah, red is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> for me, like. As I said, Game Feel is a, it's a game that makes you contemplate the game. It's a game that has that that does the, what we can't do and instantly grabs an audience. Yeah, like you're you're always there. You're like, oh my god, this just just yes, this. Mm-hmm. For me, Transistor is really it's on the it's on the boundary of what is Game Feel. It's on and it's on the, it's on like the outer bounds of Game Feel. Yeah, it's it's very good and it's it's wonderfully composed and it looks beautiful and it's fun to play. But I never really, I never really cared that much about the camarada. Mm, I never really cared yeah. about. I never really cared about the process. I didn't like. I kind of cared about the civil thing when that happened yeah. for the first time. Because it's like, oh my god, what, what the hell? There's yeah. no, there's no very like, there's no hateable, obviously hateable bad guy. Like, even though I can't remember what his name is. Who, Royce? Royce. He's the last guy. It, yeah, the last boss. Even though he is a bit of a dick. Um, like, I never really realised it was him doing all this shit until right at the end when you fought him. Um, so yeah, I didn't really engage with I that, think, but... Well, I think the human characters, like... Like, they're, they're noticeably few and far between, so you just, like, kind of relish the moments of humanity. Yeah, so true. That's true. <laughs> so it's like, it's like, it's actually something that you can understand. Yeah. Whereas the process, you can't. Maybe, that, maybe that's the point. Yeah, maybe it but is. But I, like, I would prefer to actually... No more. Yeah. So, yeah. like as as I said, like game having something having game feel means it's pretty much like top of the top. Like I, I'm not gonna put like a number like top X games of all time because it can obviously increase and decrease. Mm. But it's like like a guest like a guesstimate. It's like it's like for me there's maybe only like like somewhere between fifteen and thirty games that have the game feel. Yeah. Transistor. Transistor. So trans- oh, fuck. I Words. <laughs> Transistor is somewhere on that like out of bounds. Yeah, I reckon borderline. It's yeah. borderline. It's not it's not pushing the boundaries. It's not it's not the game that I first thought of when I actually thought of game feel. Yeah. Spoilers, it's a different game. <laughs> um, we'll say we'll say that for later. <laughs> Cuz that is that is still the undisclosed king of game feel. Yeah. But it's a good game. It it has the game feel and it definitely gets a rating of just go fucking buy it now out of 10. I I would say I would I can't remember the categories we decide on, but I would that say definitely right. Steam sale. But it's probably cheap enough to just buy it anyway, so no. why not go buy it? No, it's <laughs> I don't remember the categories anyway, so whatever. Go fucking buy it out of ten. Banana out of a shopping cart. IGN out of Kotaku. Thanks for watching and fuck, what are we playing next time? We were gonna play the new Deus Ex game. Ah yes, Deus Ex, Mankind Divided. Join us when that begins on I'll just open my calendar now. Fucking, I'm leaning over to my computer. This is this is very wonderful. You said four days, right? No, shut up. September... Wait. September 18th. That is when the Deus Ex Mankind Divided playthrough will... Fuck, I fucked this up so bad. Thank you, everybody, for watching. If anybody can actually bear to listen to our voices for 25 minutes. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time. Don't forget, we'll inject some memes, but I think it'll be mainly just serious talk. <laughs> hashtag real talks. <laughs> Put a gangster hat on the hashtag real talks. Okay. And glasses. Don't forget the glasses, yeah. And lens flare. Actually, fuck the lens flare. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> don't even try with the lens flare. I'm not, I'm not doing lens flare. Just, just the hat and the glasses. Until next time.